Notice this movie. This is 1999. It was called The Flight Club. I want to notice how Hollywood was, pl- was planting seeds that 9-11 would take place. You know why? Because Hollywood is inspired by the devil. Do you hear what I said, friends? Young people as well. Hollywood and the music industry is inspired by Satan. Notice this. Here are some scenes from this movie, Flight Club, and there are two ladies right here standing together holding hands in the form of an M, which stands for masonry. And here you have in the background the Twin Towers. You see that? 1999, here are the Twin Towers in New York. And this next scene, Twin Towers, and then here you have one going down. See it? Falling down. The second scene, you have both buildings going down. Back in 1999, Hollywood was planting seeds that the Twin Towers would come down one day. Here's the Simpsons. Oh, they're so cute. Notice in 1997, they were going on a trip to New York. And notice this little girl is holding up a book that says New York, $9. And there's the Twin Towers right behind it, which spells 9-11. Very interesting. The Simpsons. I wonder who's behind the Simpsons. Here you have Bruce Willis, Die Hard. Here's the Twin Towers on fire. Here you have a movie called The Hackers, 1995. And there you have the Twin Towers. And, and there it says Crash and Burn. Here you have video games. So young people love video games. Guess who creates video games? Satan. Here's Super Mario Brothers, 1993, in New York, and guess what? There are the Twin Towers burning and broken down. Very interesting. All these seeds being planted in the human mind that one day something would happen in New York. Who's behind it? The Illuminati and the Roman Catholic Church. Now you say, are you serious? Here's Benito Mussolini. Benito Mussolini, fascist dictator, and I want to show you how all of them are playing with the same club. Here you have the Maltese cross. You see that right there? Here's the swastika inside. Now notice who else is wearing the Maltese cross. Here you have the Queen of England wearing the Maltese cross. Here you have the Pope with the Maltese cross. Here you have President Bush addressing the Knights of Columbus whose logo is a Maltese cross. Here you have other Catholic prisoners with the Maltese cross. Here you have have again the Pope, all the Cardinals, you have the Knights of Columbus, all with these symbols. Here's the Pope right here with the symbol of the Maltese cross. Now here's a very interesting one. Here is a Nazi Chief of Intelligence Officer, his name was General Reinhard Gellin. This man was a Nazi war criminal, head of the Gellin Org and head of the BND. I want to notice now, what happened to all the Nazi people after World War II? Were they all prosecuted? Some of them disappeared, didn't they? Where did they go, friends? What's that? Now, are you German? You're German, so we believe you. Now, let me tell you something. Many of them exactly did. Right, they did go to Argentina. I have a very good friend of mine, he just moved up, his, his wife is from Chile, and she is German. Now, she speaks Spanish because her, her, you know, her, uh, her roots, you know, all of her, she grew up in uh, Chile, but he, she is German. And her husband jokingly calls her and says, yeah, you know, all your ancestors were war, Nazi war criminals. That's where they went. Let me show you something, friends. This is not my, this is not conspiracy theory stuff. Look at this. General Reinhard Gellin, here he is. Nazi war chief, there's a Nazi uh, symbol right there with the other, S, uh, the other uh, Nazi officers. Now notice this right here, he's still alive. Still alive, wearing the Maltese cross. Guess where he went? Here is a picture of him as now General Major Reinhard Gellin in the United States Army. That's right, there it is. If you read that little logo right there, this is the United States Army. He is now General Major Reinhard Gellin. He was transferred from the Nazi Army to be a General Major in the U.S. Army. And he's still alive, still there, free as a bird. Very interesting. Who else is behind this? Notice that this symbol that Benito Mussolini wore, the double-headed eagle, is an ecumenical symbol, but it's also, there's a number 32 for Freemasonry. It is all over the place. And here we have the ancient depiction of Shamash, the sun god. Is America influenced by these pagan things? Let's continue on, friends. Here's the Knights of Columbus. What about the fasciae? Have anyone ever seen these right here, the fasciae? The fasciae are a bundle of rods with a battle axe out of it, and the fasciae, says down here, the fasciae are from ancient Rome. And notice this, the fasciae are on the symbol of Knights of Columbus, and notice this, here we have all the Knights of Columbus and working with the Vatican. Here it is from the answers.com, fasciae, fasces, is a symbol of Roman authority, consisting of a bundle of rods with an axe blade projecting from them. Wait a minute, we're not, we don't believe in Roman authority, do we? Fasciae? Is that in America? Well, notice where they are, friends. Here you have fasciae and the Lincoln Memorial. 
If you have fasciae right here, there's the fasciae, there's the double-headed axe, right here on the United States dime, the fasciae. Here you have the fasciae on a quarter. How many of you have a quarter in your pocket? You'll notice that the eagle is holding a bundle of sticks or fasciae, symbolizing that one day America would become a fascist government. Here you have Thomas Jefferson, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, George Washington, right there. What is he holding? What is he leaning on right there? Fasciae. Notice this right here. Here's uh, fascist dictators Benito Mussolini and Adolf Hitler with the fasciae right there. And here it is right here in the House of Representatives. In Congress, here you have the fasciae on the wall and the stripes of the American flag with the golden throne, which symbolizes a golden axe head, symbolizing that the leadership of America, the leadership, are involved in making this country a socialist nation. Does anyone know what fascism is? It's simply right-wing socialism. It's socialist. Here you have Hitler. Did Hitler bow down to the Pope? There he is, receiving communion. There he is in church right there. Notice this, all the SS officers in the Roman Catholic Church having their mass. Now, where does, this, where does that symbol come from? Here you have Roman guards with the symbol of the sun. Here you have, again, the symbol of the sun. Notice this, they're all hailing the leadership or the Pope. Here's the Pope right here. Does, that, does you see that right there? There's the Pope, and here are all the people saluting the Pope. Adolf Hitler was a Roman Catholic. Here you have, again, Pope Pius XII. Pope Pius XII, here you have the Catholic leaders saluting themselves with the high, say high out. Pope Pius XII, PBS, even came out with a program in the year 2000, I believe it was, and it was called Pope Pius XII, Hitler's Pope. Here you have, again, Roman Catholic leaders all involved in Nazi Germany. And now guess who that is right there? This is a picture of the Nazi youth. Guess who that man is, right? That little boy wearing the Nazi symbol on his uniform. That is Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, O Pope Benedict XVI. That is the current Pope today. That is the current Pope. Here he is. Picture of Ratzinger when he was a Hitler youth. There he is right there wearing the Nazi logo. Very interesting, isn't it? And here, guess who this man is? This is Gustav Schwarzenegger, the father of Arnold Schwarzenegger, and guess here he is. Here he is, his passport, Gustav Schwarzenegger. And there are the symbols of Nazi Germany. He was a Nazi officer. And here he is, Gar Governor Schwarzenegger, right there bowing down to the fish god, fish dagen mitre of the, po of, of the cardinal. And there he is, with the back when he was a Hercules, giving the Hail Hitler salute. Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger is involved with the New World Order. And it goes on and on and on. And let it be remembered that it is the boast of Rome that she never changes. Rome is aiming to reestablish her power and recover her lost supremacy. God's word is given warning of the impending danger. She is silently growing into power. Her doctrines are exerting their influence in legislative halls, in the churches, and in the hearts of men. She, Rome, is silently growing into power. Her doctrines are exerting their influence in legislative halls, stealthily, unsuspectedly. The stealthy but rapid progress of the papal power all will be unmasked. And here he is, the Pope himself calling for a new world order. Jesuit alumni and now are in Congress. How many Jesuits are in Congress, friends? Dozens and dozens and dozens of Jesuits are in Congress. Here you have Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, bowing down and kissing the ring of the Pope. She is a Jesuit, friends. Here you have the President. Look at what a what, look at the look on his face. Next to this man. Looks like he's he's in ecstasy. Here's the other Pope with the President right here. Look at how they're all look at him. A president bowing down to the Pope. That is an abomination. Remarks by the president to the cardinals, bishops, and Catholic leaders, whitehouse.gov. Notice what the president says. All, this is the ex-president. All of you, Catholic cardinals, you are a part of the humanizing mission, which is part of the Great Commission, and the Pope John Paul II Cultural Center, which we will dedicate tomorrow, will bring this message to generations of Americans in this capital of our nation. The best way to honor Pope John Paul II Truly one of the great men is to take his teachings seriously and to listen to his words and put the Pope's words and teachings into action here in America. This is a challenge that we must accept. I'm, well, you can accept it. I'm not. And notice what this says. Telegraph.co. This is the mainline news. George W. Bush meets the Pope amid the claims that he might convert to Catholicism. George Bush was a Catholic at heart the entire time. And look at this. Who are these two men shaking hands right in front of the head Catholic in America? McCain and Barack Obama. That's why I don't vote for either one. Because we cannot with safety vote for any political parties. But we do not know whom we are voting for. 
We cannot with safety take part in any political scheme. We need to be Christians, friend. Jesus' kingdom is not of this world. Amen. Amen. We cannot labor to please men who will use their influence to repress religious liberty and to set in operation oppressive measures to lead or compel their fellow men to keep Sunday as a Sabbath, which is what's going to happen, friends. Now, what about America? I'm, I'm over time. Can I have five minutes to close out? Friends, my heart breaks. I, I'm almost shocked. I, I'm almost speechless to have to share this information with you of how close we are to the leaders of this world working to destroy this nation. Does anyone know what that is right there in the air, friends? Those are chemtrails. The United States government is poisoning its people, is preparing for a flu pandemic caused by vaccinations, and is preparing to throw people in concentration camps and to impose martial law. You say, I'm a fanatic. Let me show you the evidence with my last five minutes. Chemtrails, is this fact or fiction? Here it is, a close-up of it. Now, that is not a contrail. Do you see that, friends? That is a close-up. American citizens are pointing their zoom lenses and saying, let me see what this stuff is. They're spraying. Let me show you some evidence, friends. This is from Larry E. Craig. This is the United States Senate, April 7, 2006. This is a letter written back from Larry Craig, United States Senator. What does he say? Dear friend, thank you for contacting me regarding weather modification. I appreciate hearing from you and apologize for any of the delay in my response. Specifically, you mentioned S-517, the Weather Modification Research and Development Policy Authorization Act of 2005. That's a big name for a bill, but that's what it is. This legislation was introduced to the Senate on March 3, 2005, and is currently awaiting debate on the Senate floor. It aims to establish a Weather Modification Operations Research Board in order to develop a national research program on weather modification. So are they modifying weather, friends? Yes, they are. Let's notice this. This is coming from Federal Register Environmental Documents. Human testing, advanced notice of proposed rulemaking. Notice this. This is from the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. Notice what they say. Summary, this advanced notice of proposed rulemaking announces the EPA's plan to conduct rulemaking about criteria and standards that it would consider. Look, notice what it's doing here. It says this. It is, uh, 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 it is, let me, well, let, me, let, me, let me zoom in on it. Here it is. It is a proposal that encourages human pesticide experiments. The government is experimenting on you, friends. This is not my, look at, this is from the United States Congress. United States House of Representatives, the human pesticide experiments. This is from the, the Senate officer of Barbara Boxer in California, member of the CFR. Congress of the United States, Senate Statement of Representative Hilda L. Solis. This is a release of the analysis of the EPA's proposed rule for human pesticide tests. As this report indicates, the Bush administration has prioritized its commitment to the pesticide industry over the nation's public health and safety. Its draft rule fails to meet the National Academ Academy of Sciences' most basic recommendations. Human testing is immoral and unethical, and it is our job to hold the Bush administration accountable for public health and safety. Thank the Lord that there's still some honest people in government. 